Uh, today we are testing out a new lens. It is a uh, Tamron 17-70mm f2.8 APS-C lens for the Sony E-mount system. It is very broad in its uses because it's super wide, 17mm, up to mid-range telephoto, 70mm. Tamron is like breaking all the rules. Like most, most lens manufacturers have a very set standard, like a tradition. Like for example, mid-range telephotos are usually 24 to 70 millimeters, right? Pretty standard formulas. Tamron's definitely breaking out of that and doing their own thing. 17 to 70 millimeters, weird numbers, but they found that if they, if they kind of violate those old traditions and they just use their own methods, like a 28 to 75 or a 17 to 70, then you can engineer a very high quality lens that is lighter and a lot more cost efficient. I, I was kind of skeptical at first, but they're, they're awesome. I love them. Definitely great lenses, and I definitely recommend these for people. And we will for sure be shooting our next film, uh, The Iceland Project, with a bunch of Tamron lenses. So thanks to Tamron. Tamron did supply these lenses to us, so thank you Tamron for that. And uh, they didn't pay us to do this. We just were given the lenses. We we were allowed to say we hate them if we hate them, but we 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 love them. Gordy's here. You like your? He's, Gordy's actually using the 17 and 28 millimeter Tamron lens right now too. And what do you think? Awesome. Great lens. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Super so, light. And they're weather sealed, which is great. And the thing that's also really cool for you and me, I'm talking to you, Gordy too, is that they all have standard 67 millimeter filter threads. Nice. Right. And so one you, set of filters. One set of filters. Instead of I mean, I own like two thousand dollars worth of ND filters. Don't tell my wife. But I own a lot of money worth of ND filters I've accumulated over time. Because you have to have like all these different sizes. But with this, 67 millimeter, 67 millimeter. All the other Tamron lenses, 67 millimeter. So basically, one set of ND filters for everything, you're, you're set to go. The f2.8 constant aperture is really nice for low light stuff like this. And uh, autofocus is great. No sound at all. Some lenses are like click, 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 and I hate that. And these lenses are totally silent and I, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. It's gonna save us a lot of headache. So in the past, we had a couple lenses from a, a, a lens manufacturer, I won't mention Sigma, that were really clicky and that caused a lot of problems in post and our audio guy, Bill, was, yeah, he had to go through a lot to, to remove that click sound. And these have no clicky sound. Super silent. Yeah, nothing at all. So mm -hmm. I definitely appreciate that. Yay! flares on this are freaking cool dude oh my goodness it's like crazy dancing orbs everywhere look at a still of this so something cool about this lens is the minimum focus distance is really close so despite you know not being a macro lens you could actually get pretty macro -y shots I mean look at something like that close and I'm getting shots so very diverse lens 17 millimeter wide landscapes up to mid-range telephoto at 70 millimeters and then macro -y stuff. If you had to buy just one lens, in the past I would have recommended the Sony 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8. That lens is much more expensive and only reaches 55 millimeters. This goes all the way up to 70 millimeters and has a better close focusing distance, so I definitely recommend this. The crazy thing about this lens is that it actually supports uh, stabilization. This is the first third-party lens that I've used or even heard of that actually supports in-lens stabilization for the Sony E-mount system. A bunch of Sony lenses do that already, but I haven't heard of a third-party one doing that until this. Okay, so... I would never do it this way, but just to test the stabilization on this camera, on this lens rather, I'm gonna do a walking test with the uh, in-body image stabilization turned on in the camera and then the lens has it on all the time. By the way, you can't switch off, there's no switch on the outside of the lens for, uh, for the stabilization. It's just kind of on, which is fine by me. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a little walking test. We'll see how it works. Here we go. Uh, I'm at the 17 millimeter range and uh, I'll test it out. It's not gonna be gimbal smooth, but it is definitely good at removing like micro jitters and little vibrations and stuff. 
So yeah, overall this lens has been awesome. We've been testing it all day. Gordy and I have been walking around uh, in the outdoors doing hiking stuff. Everything is sharp from corner to corner from what I could tell. Uh, stabilization is a huge help. I would definitely recommend this for any uh, a6000 series camera owners, A6600, A6500, A6400, A6100, you get it. All the A6000 cameras definitely recommend this for. I would not recommend this lens for the A7S 3 for example, because the A7S 3 is the only a 12 megapixel sensor, so if you try to crop in for an APS-C lens, it's not going to have enough resolution. It'll be weird. So uh, it's great for the A6000 cameras as well as any higher megapixel camera like the A7 III. Anyways, good lens, totally recommend it. You should get it.